Hey students, this is a lecture on section 14.4, which is actually about the chain rule. But the first thing we're going to be learning about is dependency diagrams. Because we're doing the chain rule for partial derivatives, uh, the easiest way to do that is to make what's called a dependency diagram. Okay, so dependency diagrams allow us to set up the chain rule for functions of multiple variables. Okay, so for multivariable functions. So the chain rule that you're used to would be um, where you just have a function of one variable. And uh, so that chain rule is pretty straightforward. But the chain rule for multivariable functions uh, can be a little bit trickier. However, dependency diagrams are actually pretty easy to make. So the standard way to do it is they give you a function and first you make a dependency diagram and then you, you use that dependency diagram to write out the chain rule for that particular function. And the dependency diagram just makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, so let's see an example. Okay, these are easiest to learn by example. Okay, so example, draw a dependency diagram draw a dependency diagram and write a chain rule formula and write a chain rule formula for each derivative. Okay, we're going to do a couple of these. All right, so number one, they want us to write um, a chain rule formula for dz dq, dz dq, and then they tell us information about this function z. So they say where z equals h of m comma n and m equals f of q and then uh, n equals g of q. Okay, so they're asking us to find a formula for dz dq using the chain rule. And, uh, but we're first going to use a dependency diagram to make that an easy process. And uh, this is where uh, variable z is a function of m and n. h of m n means it's z is a function of m and n. And then m is a function of q and n is also a function of q. So the, the basic way you do this to make your dependency diagram is you start in your numerator. Okay, so you start with this, this variable right here in your numerator. Okay, and you write that down. And you give yourself plenty of room. So here's z we know is h of m comma n. And that's what we're going to start with. That's the very top of our dependency diagram. Now the reason it's called a dependency diagram is it actually branches out based on uh, independent variables. Okay, so when they're saying that z is a function of m and n, that means z is dependent on two variables. So it's dependent on m and it's also dependent on n. So the way we make our diagram is we go ahead and branch out. 
So we start with z equals h of m comma n, and then we branch out. And what does it branch out to? Well, it depends on how many variables you have as independent variables. But here, because z is a function of m and n, that means it's going to have two branches. Okay, so z is a function of m and n. Okay, so that means we're going to have two branches, and each branch is going to correspond to one of these independent variables. Okay, so z is a function of m, so that means our first branch is going to be m here. And then z is also a function of n, so our second branch is going to be n. Okay, and what we're doing here is we're making a dependency diagram, but we're not done. So what we've done so far is we've started at z, and then we branched out to m and n because z is a function of m and n. Now to finish the dependency diagram, we have to keep going. So uh, looking at m, we know that m is a function of q, and then we also know that n is a function of q. So since m and n are both functions of q, that means our other branches are just going to end up at q. Okay, so M and N both end up at Q. And how do we get the rest of that diagram? Well, we know that M and N are both functions of Q, so then uh, M and N depend on Q. So it's a dependency diagram, and you want to make it... Um, let me give myself a little bit more room here. You want to make it so that uh, you, you basically write whatever, whatever variables it depends on. Okay, so since m and n are both functions of q, q is going to be our final variable at the bottom. Okay, and I know this all looks kind of mysterious at this point, but what we can do here is we actually use this dependency diagram. That's what this is. Dependency diagram. And um, we can use it to make the chain rule. So, how does the chain rule work? Well, basically, you start on the top and you go down. Okay? So, your numerator is going to be here, it's going to be Z, and then your denominator is going to be this letter. So, for this little branch here, we're going to have partial z, partial m. So this right here is going to be partial z, partial m. So again, z was where we started, up here, and m was where we ended for that branch. And that gave us partial z, partial m. So your numerator's up on the top, and then your denominator's on the bottom. And I know this is a partial derivative because we know z is a function of two variables. So whenever you have more than one variable, you use partial derivative notation. Okay, and then we can do the same thing for n. So our numerator is going to be z and our denominator is going to be n. So this branch right here is going to be partial z, partial n. So again, the way we got that was we just looked at our diagram and um, on top we had a z and then on the bottom we had an n. So our numerator is partial z and our denominator is partial n. Okay, and then to finish the diagram we do the same thing for these little branches down here. Okay. But because m and n are only a function of one variable, instead of writing partial derivatives, we're just going to write regular derivatives down here. So this, this one down here is going to be dm dq. Now how did I get that? Well, I've got m on the top, and then I've got q down here on the bottom. So this little branch here is going to be dm dq.
And notice I'm using D because it's just a function of one variable. M is just a function of Q, which is only one variable. So I use DM, DQ. Whereas up here, Z was a function of two variables. So that's why I wrote the del notation. So del Z, del M, and del Z, del N. Okay? So just, just for your, just so you understand, um, over here, let me kind of summarize what we're doing here for the dels and the, the Ds. So we use uh, del notation. So we use del notation uh, for functions of multiple variables. Okay. Use del notation for functions of multiple variables. And you use, um, you use d, so d, d, whatever, for uh, functions of single one variable, okay. So for a function of one variable, okay. So that's just a little detail that you might not have known, but it is important. Okay. So up here, because z was a function of two variables, we use partial partial z partial m and partial z partial n. But down here, because m is only a function of one variable, we use dm dq. And then the same thing for n. Because n in this problem is only a function of one variable, we're going to have dn dq for this branch here. Okay, so this one right here is going to be dn dq. Okay, so then how do you do the whole problem? Well, um, that was the dependency diagram. The dependency, the dependency diagram is actually the trickier part. So for the rest of it, we use this dependency diagram to write the chain rule. Okay, so the chain rule here is we take our original derivative they asked us to find. So the original derivative they asked us to find was dz dq. Okay. So we write down dz dq and we go from there. Actually, let me just, my pen is spazzing out. Let me give myself more room down here. Okay, so we've got dz dq. And uh, now we're going to use our dependency diagram to write out the chain rule. So let's start with this first branch here on the left. So the branch on the left, you can kind of start at the top. You always start at the top and then you work your way down. Okay, so here, starting at Z, we're going to have partial Z partial M times partial M partial Q. So I start at the top and I go down each branch until I'm at the bottom. So we're going to have partial z partial m, which is the first branch, times dm dq, which is the second branch. Okay, so partial z partial m times dm dq. So this right here was just me going straight down the tree. So we start at z up here. So we got partial z partial m and then we go down the, the second branch and that's times dm dq. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and add this and do the same thing on the right side of the tree. Okay, so starting at the top, we're going to work our way down. So we're going to have plus the right side of the tree. Okay, and then for the right side of the tree, Working from the top down, we have partial z partial n times dn dq. Partial z partial n times dn dq. And 
And uh, so I'm having trouble with my pen here. Okay, so again, how do we do all that? Well, on the left side of the tree, we start at the top and we went down both of these branches. So that gave us partial Z partial M times DM DQ. That gave us this part right here. And then we added that to the right side of the tree. And then on the right side of the tree, once again, we started at the top and we worked our way down each branch. So partial Z partial N times DN DQ. And that gave us this right here. 